So, as I said before, our Pascal's triangle is limited by the fact that we have to draw all of that. So it gets really quite annoying when you go beyond anything more than five or six lines. So that's why it's more of an introduction to the binomial theorem. So we we're kind of using it as a bridge to the binomial theorem. So what I want to do here is overcome that limitation. And how we do that is by having Pascal's triangles, but using combinations to work out the numbers within the triangle rather than writing them all out. So let's learn how we're going to use combination to find these numbers. So we know that Pascal's triangle starts off with one, one, yeah? And we can actually use combinations to work out these numbers. So one and one can be worked out by having one C zero and one C one, okay? So let's just practice putting that into your calculators. So you just need to press one and you'll have a little C button. So shift that and zero, yeah? And do you get one? Good, great. Now let's practice with this one. So put in one C one in your calculator and you get one as well, don't you? Exactly, so you can see how we use this combination to get one and one. But how do we know what combination to put in? So this is what I'm gonna try and show you. There's a pattern to that. So for one and one, you know that this is the numbers that's used as the coefficients for the index of one, yeah? So that's how we start off with the number one there. And here, we always start off with zero, okay? So it's actually quite simple. So this is what the index of this is used for, and that we always start with zero, okay? All right, now let's see how it works for the next line, which is one, two, one. So we can use the combinations again to get these numbers. So how we know what combination to use, remember how I said, well, this one was used for the index of one, and this is used for the coefficients for when we're expanding for the index of two, right? So that's how we know we're gonna start off with two up here, and remember, this always starts off with zero. And the next one is just gonna be 2c, and this, you just plus one, so it becomes one. And finally, that becomes 2c2 there, yeah? And the last one here, these two numbers should always be the same, all right? So we can have a quick check, does this give us those numbers? So let's just check this one, okay? So put that in your calculator, so remember two, and then C and zero, yeah, and you should get one. What about this one? Two and then C and one. Good, it gives you two, right? So you can see this is how we can use combination to work out these numbers. All right, let's have a bit more practice with the next line. So here we have one, three, three, one, yeah? And to get these numbers, we're gonna use this formula for combinations. So this is used for the index of three. So we're gonna start off with, good, three C zero, okay? And this will be three C one, two, three C three, all right? And if you put this number in your calculator, you're gonna get one. And if you put this, you get three, and this gives you that three, and this gives you one. So this, these combinations is gonna give you these four numbers essentially. All right, okay, and you can kind of see that although this is the first term, it's always starting off with zero there, yeah? Okay, so just remember that we're starting with zero even though we call it technically the first term. All right, let's try and use combination to get the same numbers as we would by just writing out the Pascal's triangle for that. So we know that because this is used for the index of four, right? That means we're gonna start off with four C zero as our first term. And then four C one will be our second term. Add another one, C two become our third term. Four C three, our fourth term. And finally four C four as our fifth term, all right? So this is how we use combination to work out these numbers without writing it all out, yeah? So why this becomes useful is if you have 
power 20, for example, it's going to take you a really long time to go down and write it all out. But it's going to be a lot easier to know that the first term for that is always going to be 20C0, right? And the next one's going to be 20C1, the next one 20C2, so on until 20C20. Yeah, so can you see how this is how we use combinations? All right, so that's the first point I want to make is how to use combinations instead of drawing out all the numbers. The second point I think that's really important to make here is that what I said before is although we're starting off with zero here, this is called our first term. So just be really careful. Our first term is when we have 4C0, all right, not 4C1. So always starting off with zero. So in that way, our second term is actually 4C1. So can you see how that happens just to be one less than the term? And our third term is 4C2. So once again, that's one less than the term, isn't it? And fourth term, you have three here. And finally, the fifth term, you have four here. So you can see that this number here is always one less than the term, all right? And that's gonna be really important when we move on to the general term. But I just wanna introduce that concept first. All right, great. So now we know how to use combinations to work out the Pascal's triangle numbers without actually drawing out the triangle. And that saves us a lot of time and effort when we have something to a very high index. All right, let's go through some questions now. So starting off with question six here, we wanna consider the expansion of a plus b to the power of seven and find the following. So this is what I was saying before. If you see to the power of seven, it would have been such a headache to try and write out that whole triangle to seven. So instead, we can use the combination method that we just learned. So let's think about the first term. So the first term, the coefficient, is going to be given to you by, so this is the power of seven, right? So it's going to be seven C, and we always start off with zero there. Can you see that? So you have seven C zero as your coefficient for the first term. Now, this actually helps us work out what the powers of A and B are gonna be. So A will always be to the power of this up, minus that, okay? So seven minus zero gives us seven. Whereas B will always be to the power of this down here, all right? So let's just go over that again. Here we have seven C zero, and how we know a is the power of, well, first of all, here we easily know this is the power of seven, so we know we start off with a to the power of seven, but that's also given to us by seven minus zero. Okay, that minus that. And we know that we start off with b to the power of zero, but that it's also given to us by that number there. All right, so let's keep that in mind. So that just gives us a to the power of seven, because this, when you put in your calculator, gives you one, b to the power of zero is one as well. All right, now what about when we consider the third term? So, third term means t3, that's how we express the third term. What's the coefficient gonna be? So have a think about that. So we know it's to, this is to the index of seven, so it'll be seven c, and because it's the third term, this will be down here, two, exactly. Because remember how I said, this is always one less than the term. So with the first term, we had zero here. So with the second term, we'll have one. And so with our third term, we're gonna have two here. Now, we'll have a to the power of five. So that's seven minus two. So that's how we get five there. And b to the power of that number there. Yeah, so that's how we get that. And all you need to do now is just put that into your calculator. So 7C2 into your calculator, and that should give you 21. And a to the power of five, b to the power of two. Easy, right? Okay, now let's use this to try and consider what the nth term will look like. All right, so I'll give you a second to think about it, maybe, and write it down, but so think about the fact that nth term is gonna be expressed by Tn, okay? So for that, 
what do you think the coefficient is going to look like? So remember, t, the nth term for this one, so nth term specifically for this, we know it's going to be 7 up here, but what's going to go down here? Well, we know that this is always 1 less than that, right? So when it's a third term, we put it to 2, and when it's first term, it's 0. So it makes sense that it's going to be n minus 1, yeah? So that's how we get 7c n minus 1 as our coefficient. Okay, now this here looks complicated, but it's actually quite a simple idea how we get that. So remember how I said a to the power of is actually just given to you by that minus that, which gives you 5. So same idea, it's just 7 minus that, which is n minus 1, yeah? So that's how we get that there, okay? And b is just to the power of whatever's down here. So that's why it's b to the power of n minus 1, okay? Can you see how that works there? And now all you need to do is just simplify a little bit. So it's only that we're really simplifying. So 7 minus n minus minus 1 becomes plus. So it just becomes 8 minus n there. And this is going to be working out our nth term. All right. So this is how we use combination because it's really easy to work out each of these terms without going through the whole triangle here. Okay. So I'll give you a second, just have a look over this. Yeah, get the idea of that. Now let's move on to the next question. So here we're going to be working with a plus b to the power of 20. So as soon as you see that, you know I'm going to be working with combinations here. There's no way we can write it all out. So this wants us to just find the coefficient of the seventh term in this. All right. So how are we going to do that? So remember, we have our c, right? And what goes up here is just that index. Easy. 20. And if it's our seventh term, remember how what the number that goes down here is just 1 less than 7? So it'll just be the number of terms minus 1. So here, you'll have 20c, 7 minus 1. Yeah? And for a, you just have that minus that. So it's 20 minus 7 minus 1. And then b to the power of whatever's down here. Pretty simple, right? And then just some simplification. So that becomes 20c6. That's 20 minus 6 essentially, right? So a to the power of 14 and b to the power of 6. And then you just need to put 20c6 into your calculator, which should give you. So 38,760 and a to the power of 14, b to the power of 6. So that, you can see, is a very easy way to work out the seventh term in this, which would have taken you much longer had we drawn out the Pascal's triangle. All right, so just remember, the most important thing I want you to take away from this little section is that this here, this number here is always one less than the term, all right?